Well, noob, you have come a long way. You started off as nothing more than a twinkle of a black silhouette in the developer's eyes, but they just didn't have enough RAM to truly allow you to express yourself. But over the years, they didn't give up on you, and more importantly, you didn't give up on yourself. And now look at you. You're a fully developed character with an interesting backstory as the original Sub-Zero resurrected. And they even gave you an awesome costume, which makes you perfect for McFarlane Toys to release a figure to celebrate the wraith you've become. MC82 here, and we're looking at Noob Cybot by McFarlane Toys. And if you're familiar with McFarlane's Mortal Kombat 11 line, you already know what to expect from the packaging. The golden yellow and black gold color scheme is still striking. It's product heavy imagery and the MK11 branding makes for one pretty box. Given the source material, I would think if you can't get the look of this guy right, a company might be in the wrong business. Thankfully, McFarlane tends to do well with these characters that are covered from head to toe in detail, especially details of the dark gothic variety. And while there's only so much you can put into a $20 figure, McFarlane has once again shown that when they have something to work with, they can sculpt and pack a solid amount of detail into a figure. Starting with the subtle texture mimicking the leather in his hood, transitioning into the soft plastic ends. His mask has an intricate and clean yellow pattern and trim, and the whites of his eyes stand out very well. But as we move down into his body, I'm somewhat torn. The detail is amazing, as his tattered clothing is sculpted very well, and each area is given a unique patchwork of detail and texture. His armor is stacked throughout his body, even on his fingers, but there's just too many areas where the paint lets this down a bit. The grays in his armor, whether it's the shoulder plates, the gauntlets, or anything throughout his chest is largely flat and dull. There's subtle highlights of dirty yellows and tans, but they're just that, subtle. What this needed was a lighter shade of gray to result in a more metallic finish. And I'm not expecting the best kind of metallic finish, especially with a figure of this price point but at least a few highlights would go a long way to help better distinguish the detail. And this is kind of made worse by the fact that the packaging features doctored images of what the figure should look like even without the professional lighting. Noob's weapon, the sickle, mirrors the highs and lows of Noob's appearance. Detailed wraps, individually sculpted blades are a really nice touch, but it's still all given a relatively flat color finish. Getting into his articulation, Noob Saibot's head is limited by his hood, so looking up is a bit of a problem. But he can look down, and you can move his head around if you work around his hood and shoulder plates. There's a little bit of give to his shoulder pads, so the butterfly joints allow his arms to do a full rotation. The bicep swivel, and it extends straight out 90 degrees. He also has double jointed elbows. His wrists swivel and hinge, and thankfully, unlike Shao Kahn, his armor covers up his wrist joints very well. His body moves extremely well. He has an ab crunch, he leans back pretty far, and he has good range in his waist swivel. Getting down to his lower body, you will have to maneuver around his tunic and tattered clothing, but his leg can kick out 90 degrees. He has a thigh, leg, and ankle swivel and rocker. And his foot can bend forwards and backwards. As usual with these McFarlane releases, there's little to no accessories. We've already touched on his sickle, which was thankfully included, and yes, you're given the usual stand as well. Though I will say, Noob stands on his own pretty well. I know I'm going to be in the minority on this, but when I look at this figure, I see a good but not great release from McFarlane Toys. It's held back in sort of an unfinished state based on nothing more than my own expectations of what a $20 to $25 figure can and should look like. The issues that I've brought up here aren't very different than the ones I brought up with McFarlane's Shao Kahn figure. However, where Shao Kahn was saved by a strong emphasis on his sculpt and paint apps on his armor, 
Noob Cybot is just saved by his appearance, as any effort that's relatively close to the source material should result in a pretty good figure, which is what I feel we got here. But it's frustrating because I feel like it was on the cusp of being a great figure. Still, it's a 7 out of 10, and he's going up in the display. Because whatever issues I may have with him, it's still better than paying hundreds of dollars for the Storm Collectibles version, which is based on his original design, and it's a much less interesting design at that. I appreciate you guys sticking around to the end of the review. As always, if you enjoyed this review, please leave a like, comment, and consider subscribing. And I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks a lot.